Tonight, gang, put on your dancing shoes, all right? We're talking rock and roll. Some of the loudest names in metal music. How about Ace Frehley, all right, from Supergroup Kiss? Or Joey Ramone from the Ramones? Or the Men of Anthrax, the Circus of Power, or the Infamous, and they are gorgeous, cycle sluts from hell. If you're ready for the Mad Men of Music, then you're ready for the man with the mad mouth. Come on! <laughs> cut right down to the truth about heavy metal music. Is it all sex, drugs, groupies? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, over the last few years, heavy metal's become the biggest and hottest part of rock and roll. It is loud, it is sometimes violent, it's white, and it's male. Oh, yeah? No, it's black. Not all male, baby, all right? Some think it's the devil's music, others think it's only rock and roll. So, gang, I'll tell you what, we'll find out when we meet our first guest, and let's do that right now. Let me introduce you. Let me, let me introduce you. Let me introduce you to Alex from the, uh, from the metal group I'm sure you're very familiar with. Alex Mitchell is with Circus of Power. Let's, uh, let's yeah. take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of Alex's work, all right? It's dynamite. Come on, baby. Shoot it up there. Let's see it. Come on, man. Get it going. All right, let me come to Alex. Alex, heavy metal now dominates the rock and roll world, all the charts. It's often violent, sexy, and many of the songs do glorify drug use. I have no problem with free expression, but don't you guys worry about uh, what your young audience is going to think about the drugs part? Well, first of all, our songs don't glorify drug use. In fact, there's a song on our record called Needles. It's an anti-heroin song. So to begin with, that's not where we're all about. So it's a misconception. When you get the Tipper when Gores, it is, yeah. when you get the Tipper Gores and the old frustrated senators' wives down there they screaming wanna, about They want to generalize things, stereotype things, and that's the wrong way to do You know that. I agree with you. What statement are you trying to make? Hey, let me introduce Jesse, all right? Jesse is probably one of the finest music critics in the country, Mr. Music Mouth himself. Go ahead, Jess. What kind of musical statement are you trying to make? Um, rock and roll... It's never changed, man, since it first came out. It's about rebellion. It's about not uh, being told what you're supposed to be doing, thinking for yourself. So you, are you uh, proposing are you an outlaw? Finish? Are you got an outlaw? Are you finish? Finish? Sure, finish. Okay, finish. let me do that. Um, it's about having fun. <laughs> it's about partying with kids. Yeah, fun it's about here being, having a good time, all right? Go ahead. So are you, pro are you, are you promoting sort of an outlaw image? I'm not promoting anything. I'm just playing oh, my music. Oh, you have music. your group? You have to be promoting something. open people's minds up. Say that again? To open people's minds up, maybe, to a, oh, up a better to way of thinking. Yeah. A better, way, a better way of thinking. Now, here, hey, here, you, here hey, you guys. Hey, hey. Hey, you know, the way, yeah, the way, uh, the way, you, the way, you the, you guys, way uh, the way the Beatles and Rolling Stones and the Who the Beatles, and Bob man, Dylan. You're not the Rolling Stones. And, hey, hey, I'm, you call yourself a critic. What kind of, I the mean. The point is here. Right in this room, Ignorance you're sitting here bliss, promoting, saying that you are promoting something to the public, to the youth of America, okay? Now, the thing is here, you're promoting yourselves as outlaws. 
I'll, you know, uh, a rebellious okay. image. You say rebellion. You use the word rebellion in your yeah, comment. Okay. Well, wait a second, now, Jess. Let me ask you. Do you get this bent out of shape with uh, Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson? <laughs> the truth, man, I don't listen to Waylon Jennings and William, Willie Nelson. I think we're here... So, in other words, you're saying these guys, you like their music, hey, but Jeff, don't, don't you like them going anyway, outlaws. My point is this. <laughs> you're promoting this sort of anti-establishment image, yet you work for the biggest establishment of them all, the yeah, record Yeah, but man, companies. you don't exactly dress at Brooks Brothers to get your oh, hair cut at Honey's. We're not talking about the way we dress. We're not talking... No, 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 no. no, no. We're not, we're not but we're that's not talking... That's a form of rebellion, you know, too. But we're not, I'm a form of rebellion because hey, I don't like the garbage that goes on the in television. The point is, we're we not talking about the way we dress. We? Yeah. We're talking about the fact right. that if you're promoting this image of rebellion, this outlaw image, you're working for the biggest corporations in America, okay. the record companies. Okay, wait a second. This, well, is a system, this is a system we live in and a system we work within, all right? What am I going to do? Uh, work a construction job and pay for my own records to get them out? No, That's I'm going to be point. on a record label who distributes them, gets them around to everyone that wants to buy them, whether they want to buy them but or not. But then the stash well, you take probably, probably, You know, a lot of people do do that. They start out, they work jobs. I work jobs. I did, I did various jobs. Um, hey, what, what kind my, of jobs my, did you do? My, my guitar player used to be a construction what kind of, worker. What kind of you know, my guitar player used to be... Wait a so second, before we get too carried to away, Jess, you know? let me go to Joey. Joey, Joey, hear me out, baby. Let me ask a question. Do parents really have a right, I guess, uh, to be afraid of what some of the guys do on the road with their underage daughters? Well, they did it themselves at one time, didn't they? They did it themselves? Probably. Probably? Let me ask, Man, let me ask you a question. I don't, I don't, I don't... Do you ask a girl how old she is if she comes on to you? But you know, you re you recognize you got a responsibility, sure, sure. right? Yeah, no, we're responsible. So he recognizes we're you responsible got a adult here. Do you think if a 16 or 17 year old girl is it, do you think a 16 or 17 year old girl is in a position to decide whether it's a good thing or not for her to go to bed with you? I mean, and if you couldn't care less about her, this girl you've ever met before, if it's a groupie, I mean, what do you do? When, what's your stance on that, man? When, well, when, I'm, when not, I'm not really into groupies, I'll tell you the well, truth. I mean, what do you def what, define what a groupie is to you? I'm I mean, curious. well, I, I don't know really what is a groupie, actually, what's except the a stereotype hey, term, yeah. Joey, you were answering the question. You're not into groupies, right? I mean, um, well, see, gr groupies, groupies, there aren't really any groupies. Okay, I mean, I'm not sure there are. I mean, from you. Alex, you can I mean, tell I'm, me. I think of Alex, at least when a groupie would make a move on you. I think of those kind of groupies. Come on. You think of a young girl who wants to, so turned on by you, and wants to sit there and have sex with you, would you sit there, and you don't really give a about her anyway. I mean, uh, you know. And listen, and listen, what's in it? Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, you're assuming, which makes an ass out of who? Say that again? First of all, you're assuming when you just said that to him. Who does that no, make an I'm, ass I'm making, out of? I'm making a point. You the and point me. is, I'm, I'm bringing up a hypothetical situation. Okay, what happens when you have a 16 or 17 year old girl come up to you and who wants to, who's, who who What do you do? You? Just because I'm a musician, I'm any different? We're talking about you. Don't throw it back in my court. No, but the issue, the issue, the issue, and the issue any of us, is not me. Any of us know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesse, Jesse, any of us who've traveled on the road have had that happen. I don't care if you're a traveling salesman, all right? This audience, they've had it happen. You don't have to be a rock and roll star. I have it happen all the time. And I always tell them, wait until they get married. Now, that isn't the way I really mean it. But I ain't messing around with anyone who's under 12. Ah. <laughs> no, I'm not messing around. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Anyone who's under 12 years of having been married. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you, you've been married a few times, I think. Right? Yeah, I've been married three times. And I'm getting married a fourth and final time. Right. Final because my girlfriend has told me she'll kill me. <laughs> right, so I'm playing cool. You know, you can get into this. They always blame drugs on rock groups, sex on rock groups. Man, where the hell did we all come from to create rock groups if those things didn't exist? Oh, well, you, know, you bring that up. So let's say what, hey, everybody what thing... Everybody has groupies. Baseball players have groupies. Well, I what mean, can you, know, you do? Box. Do you Garbage consider yourself a groupies, role model, I mean, though, for know. these kids? Do you consider yourself a role model? I mean, look at the way you yeah. dress, man. You think these kids are going to know anybody? And hey, listen, I'd kill myself if I dressed like you. Hey, <laughs> I'm wearing a tux. Let me hear honey. Let me hear honey. Everyone's talked except honey. Go ahead, sweetheart. I think, um... See how big the tree has grown. <laughs> Mort and I have a rapport. No, um, have a what? Rapport. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, on, on the air it's called a rapport. But, um, 
I feel that this groupie thing, there's a lot of groupies who want to live vicariously through the entertainers they like, and that's what we are as entertainers. Mm -hmm. But don't you think that gives you a certain responsibility? I think there's a sense of responsibility that goes with it. I'm I mean, aware of that, but I'm not going to let it dictate my creative expression. All right, but and, and let me the question is, let me ask, wait okay. a second, let's right. turn this around to a woman's point of view. As a woman, you have groupies out there. Do you get young 14, 15-year-old boys who come on to you once in a while? I was getting 14 and 15-year-old boys even before I was in a band, so that's that <laughs> that <isn't laughs> So how do you handle it? How do you handle it? I'm, do you I'd know? like to think of myself as discriminating. All right. But, I but, 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 but Alec, wait, 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 wait a second, all right? Tonight, the first ever music video from 1958. Second inning, gang, let me reintroduce some of the folks up here. Most of you have already met uh, uh, Joey Ramone. We are joined now by a friend of ours, Ace Freely, who's uh, formerly with KISS, now heads up uh, Ace's Comet. Uh, Ace, let me start right off. Let me start right off with, if you don't mind, babe. You were with the supergroup KISS. Tell me truthfully, did you know of other groups that use drugs, or did you use drugs? Your group. Did my group use drugs? Not really. Okay. So. Hey, so hey. not really, man. Is that a, hey, tell I'm me, not on come trial. On, man. Come on, man, you're not on trial, all right? Yeah. You're not on trial. No one can arrest you. No one's going to do squat. But we know a lot of people, we're talking about guys in boardrooms of major corporations do drugs. You guys get withered out on the road. You're going from one town to the next. You get to Triple Oaks, Arkansas. You don't know where the hell you are. I mean, did you ever use drugs on the road? Well, put it this way. Uh, there were times when doctors would come in and give us prescription drugs because we were feeling down. How the, how the hell? I thought you hey. needed a weatherman to get snow. Huh? Huh? All right, boy. Isn't this... Isn't this wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Well, you know. Is this country run by truckers on speed 24 hours a day? Used to be. Used yeah, to be. Changed. You know, I don't know. I haven't been in a no, drug it hasn't changed. Hey, look, this isn't the Spanish Inquis Inquisition. No, I'm not the trying to do that to you, Ace. Hey, I'm just trying to get that, you. You know, uh, you know, truth is what you guys are all about because you're not afraid of anything. All right, well, truth yeah, is what I'm about because okay, I'm not about. afraid of anything. Hey, you've that's experimented with drugs, about. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've experimented with drugs. Tell I would imagine 95% of the people in the audience have experimented with drugs. But as a parent, right? As a parent. As a parent, I'm concerned yeah, well, that, I have my an kids, that my kids would experiment with drugs because they were taught it was cool by you guys. Hey, wait a minute. I never promoted drug use. So don't say... Ever done any stop. songs? Ever done any songs, Ace, that say it's, uh, you know, it's cool to be, uh, you know, zoned out or anything? Uh-oh, here we go. Huh? Yeah. I've, 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 uh, I've written songs that maybe have innuendos, but you could take it either way. You know, I mean, if you have a, a, a deranged mind... What way did you take it when you wrote it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well you know, the but jury's the, out on that one. Yeah, but again, right. again, we have the same situation here. You're supposed to be setting an example, man. Hey, well, you, look, you said you have an eight-year-old daughter. Now, what does your eight-year-old daughter think of your, of, your, uh, you know, of your exploits? I mean, does she understand? My eight-year-old daughter realizes that I've been through a lot in my life. I've had ups and downs. An eight-year-old daughter can reason that out. Yeah, she can. She yeah, you think to be that she uh, has the highest IQ in her class. Do you have a daughter? No, I don't. Okay. I have two sisters, though. Thank God. <laughs> Great. All I'm saying is, listen, you know, at this point in time in my life, I don't use chemicals anymore, and I don't promote them, and, uh, I mean... Uh, yeah. Good. Good. In other words, what you could say, what you could say 
What you could say honestly is that you've had a lot of ups and downs in your life, sure. caused you a lot of mental anguish, and because of that, not having the mental strength that you wanted, you experimented with drugs, but have since grown up and recognized that it didn't do squat for you. Hey, drugs are anti-life as far as I'm concerned. Okay, man, you said you know? it. I said it. I mean, honey, go ahead, sweetheart. A lot of people who um, listen to rock don't have a sense of irony or a sense of metaphor and take everything literally. And um, any artistic endeavor uh, should bring about like some cause of like controversy, a sense of conflict, and things that don't seem like socially acceptable. There's a lot of operas, um, you know, and things you that are about. Literally, you just use the word literally. Yeah, now, well, if you had a, if, here's an album that Ted Nugent put out, who was supposed to be here, who didn't have the guts to show up. Okay, come on, come on, man, look. You know that for a fact. You know, this has got a woman scratching this guy, this, part of this guy's back, creating blood. What kind of image is this? Never happened to you. Uh, yeah, don't hey, knock it till you've tried it. I wouldn't tell you if it did. The point is this, the issue is not me, the issue is the image of this album. No, the, the issue is people who, don't know who lack better. intellect who can't see things that but way. But young kids have to be taught. Well, and if, that and if their parents aren't around parents and they're using you guys as a form of guidance, you, you gotta set a good example. Now look at this, this is, this is like, look at it, you got a, you got a dog. This is the Scorpions, Animal Magazine. Wasn't you got a dog, you got a girl on her knees and you got this guy. What the hell is wrong with that? That's suggestive no, bad combination. What on, is wrong? That. That's bad what combination. What is it's wrong? Suggestive. A girl kneeling down, her Doberman pincher next to her. Maybe, maybe it's not a, to you, may, man. To you, it's male domination, no, no, but, right? But maybe to you me, can reason it's it out, a girl but... who's saying, if you unzip that thing, baby, my dog will take it off. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> Joey. 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 How much responsibility do you feel to the people who buy your records? How much responsibility? I feel, feel a feel social responsibility. Responsible. You do? Yeah. Okay. 100% responsible, so you'd always do something that you thought. And again, well, perception well, is what in, you see in, in your own mind. Integrity reigns supreme with the Ramones. And integrity remains yeah. reign, uh, supreme. Reign supreme. Right. I, I, ideals uh, reign supreme with the Ramones. I gotta go back to Alex, because Alex uh, gives me a straight shot every time. <laughs> Where do you think the bad image surrounding heavy metal came from in the first place? Parents. Same as it came from when Elvis came along? Yeah. When the Beatles came yeah. along? When the Stones came along? Same thing. Yeah. What's in Paris? It's not in New York. Parents. Uh, parents. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you have your hand over with, uh, whether it be Gene Krupa, you know, yeah. like back in the 30s with, you know, drummers, you know, they, they were That's right, kind Gene Krupa. Well, of course, don't forget Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich and all those guys were also, they were accused of being heavy into the drug scene and, in fact, uh, did get themselves I mean, in trouble. I something about for. musicians get, you know, penned here, you know what I mean? Because, uh, because of our decadent lifestyle, supposedly. What is your decadent lifestyle, Joey? Coming on the more downy show. Yeah. You're on the more downy yeah. show. Well, that's a that's a low. That's a new low. Honey, <laughs> what's your decadent lifestyle? Do you have a you have a boyfriend? I have a boyfriend who I love very much. Okay. And do you live with him? No, I have one. And uh, yeah, I live with him now. Okay. Is it the type of guy you can make a commitment to? Is um, it the type of guy you can make a commitment to? Yeah, I feel that way, but there's a lot of commitments I have to make to myself. Okay. I think a lot of people in this business, what they do is exert their individuality, and that bugs mm -hmm. a lot of people. And yeah, I think people that's don't where, understand that. Yeah, people don't understand that, exactly, I and that's where it. the flack comes I from. I want to take a look at Ace's uh, clip, all right? Ace, let's see a clip on you, babe. We're, this is this yeah. it, babe, right now. Let me see Ace's clip. Ace Freely, all right? Nothing wrong with that, pal. That's just good music. That's good stuff. All right, next. We're going to meet the women who travel with the band, the groupies. Yeah! 
finally equal treatment for hands and nails. Now there's Vaseline Intensive Care Hand and Nail Formula Lotion to soften rough, dry hands and help strengthen nails with moisturizers for your hands and keratin, the protein found in healthy nails. Hand and Nail Formula from the makers of Vaseline Intensive Care because we believe in equal treatment for hands and nails. The Elvis Home Video is here. Yes, this historic live performance can be yours on VHS or Baby. Just call for the king. Order now and you'll get Heartbreak Hotel, Jailhouse Rock, Love Me Tender, all hits all live, plus Hound Dog, Don't Be Cruel, All Shook Up, and many more. It's Elvis at his best. Elvis, the comeback special. Now on VHS or Beta for only $29.95. Call for the king. Call now. Wednesday at 7, WSYT presents a three-hour movie special. The Western classic, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Don't miss Clint Eastwood in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Wednesday at 7 on your favorite movie station, TV 68 WSYT. TV 68, WSYT, and Wendy's Restaurants team up to bring you Ski 68. Half-price skiing through February. Just go to any participating Wendy's location to buy your TV 68 ski button. It's only 68 cents. Then, wear it on Tuesday at this area ski location, and you'll ski half-price. Ski 68, brought to you by Wendy's and TV 68, WSYT. Let me introduce uh, Jim Laverde, all right, of Baron Cross. Where's Jim? Right Jim, there. how you doing, pal? All right. You guys are what are called the good Christians of heavy metal. Do you ever stray? Stray with the truth? <laughs> how about groupies? Well, we kind of feel like, uh, uh, you know, we don't fall into that category. You know, we're not you heavy metal to fall. Yeah, no, we're into heavy metal, but um, you know, so we're you, not straying into the groupie scene. So but we feel in, like so they when, need to know. What happens when groupies come backstage, man? I mean, people get There's backstage. There's no reason back. why we can't talk to them. No, people. none. None. No, no right? No. Yeah. 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 You don't, uh, you never take advantage of some straying 14, 16 year old who thinks it's cool, man, that she went to bed with a rock and roll star? No, because that's not what we're all about. What are you all about? We're a positive rock and roll band that stands for the good things that, you know, God has created us to have. All right, let me yeah. ask you a question. What's the biggest record Kiss had? Biggest record Kiss has had. I could, Ace. Hey, cool. How many did you sell, baby? How many uh, did you sell? I probably the biggest record Kiss probably had was the uh, our our live album, which probably went triple or quadruple platinum. Okay, see so you in two minutes. Huh? How about what's what's the biggest record you guys have had? Probably the latest record. It probably sold like around a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Does that give us a message that good doesn't make it anymore? <laughs> no, mm, no, no. No. You have a situation here where uh, you're talking about money and promotion. Now, I mean, uh, a group like Kiss has got a name already. So, uh, so you're even, saying even that, that even that triple platinum well, album, the record company, of course, put the dollars behind all the right, promotion. but let me ask you a question then, all right, Chess? Are you telling me that all of the record manufacturers, distributors, and record companies are really a bunch of sleazeball slime buckets, and they won't put money behind a good group like him? No, no, that's, that's not, that's not, not about That's what you just said, man. No, you said money matter, went into him. It's a matter of funds matter that are available. Out. Not every record company has the budget to go ahead and promote a record. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe his record sold $100,000. Now, if he had a $5 million budget or whatever, you know, as, as much money as, let's say, what? Kiss had, you know, you might... How many, you might how many records did, you know, did your first record sell? You know, I mean, it's like you got to start someplace. How many did your first record sell? 30000 How many did your first record sell? Probably about a quarter of a million. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm getting the same message, Jess. I'm getting the same message. 
that maybe it's the record company's fault because yeah, listen, they don't want to put money variables. behind a guy like this who want to have a shot, too. But there are a lot of variables. You just can't pinpoint it on one issue. But the bottom line is an act like Tracy Chapman. Let me tell you something. Tracy Chapman writes great songs. She's a very good artist. But Tracy Chapman would not as be as big as she is today if it was not for the money that was put behind her from a record company yeah. and from SBK Entertainment Corp that signed her. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to the... No, but uh, uh, maybe Tracy Chapman's not heavy metal, but she's still, she won three Grammys and so on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, kind of crip. All right, I want to, I want to, I want to talk to, I want to talk to Pat, all right? Uh, Pat, 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 Pat. There you are, Pat. Your daughter, is this your daughter here? Is a groupie. Not the kind of groupie, though, that I think you're discussing. Uh, she, uh... Yeah. Pat! Are you a Do groupie, you? too? Are you a groupie, too? Not really. Not really? Who, who's I your would... favorite entertainer? Favorite entertainer? I Who? think Brett Michaels is a doll. Brett Michaels? But... If you got a shot to go backstage and talk with Brett Michaels and kind of schmooze a little bit, go out and have a drink, would you go out with him? Yeah. I don't drink. All right. And would you go out and have a Coke? God, look at when all... When I say I'd drink, it doesn't Coke. always mean booze. Yeah, a Coke, yeah. So you go out and have a Coke with him, right? Sure. So do you mind if your daughter uh, kind of digs someone and goes out and has a uh, Coke with him? Yeah. I mean, when Jesse mentions 11 and 12 and 13-year-olds... 12, right? How old are you? 21. ...being corrupted, where are the parents of these kids that are allowing their daughters to go backstage? You know, I mean... We need to, they, most of these kids are 16 years old, 17 years old, even, even younger, do not have parental guidance. A lot of these kids. All right, when a, you can get a 12-year-old girl made up and she looks 22, 23... Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, but that's my true. My point is that we get, when you have, when, the, when there's no parent around, and you've got performers that look like this, not, not that I know, not that it's, this is their image. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not finished yet. The point is, is that a young kid does not know any better. And you a can't tell me that. You know what, and the whole thing that comes down to it is the responsibility that falls behind the performer, and you can't tell me otherwise. I think you're, you're, it's, it's, both. it's both. It's both. It's every it that belongs in your I think a great is. deal of uh, it. I think a great deal of it belongs to the parent. Yeah. And as a parent, I took responsibility for my girls. I went with them to the damn concert. There's I went with them backstage. But what about, and I didn't mind going out with parents, any of these guys wait a minute, what with about my the, kids. What about the parents that take on responsibility? But yet, their kids still go astray. What about that? That happens. Well, that it happens, happens a lot. You, you said, can't be with you your you kids 24 your hours a day. You said you wouldn't stop your kid from, let's say, if she went backstage to meet her favorite performer, you wouldn't stop them from going out for having a Coke. Now, you're a rarity. I, don't, I was going out with Brett Michaels, not my daughter. No. You're, you're yeah. a, but you're a rarity, though. You see, you're, you're a rarity. Jesse, How do you know your daughter's going to be so wholesome? Jesse, what happens if she comes to you and says she's pregnant? Oh, Jesse. Oh, please give it up. Jesse, give it up. you can come home and say you're pregnant and, no, have never, left, pregnant. and never leave the schoolyard. No. Let me tell you. Could hey. I tell you something? You are so uh, opposed to the covers on the album. No, no, I'm not, you, I'm not wait opposed. Wait a minute. Could I finish? So Jesse, you have just promoted the sales on those yeah. albums. Hey, but you know something? Yeah. Yeah. You know something? But you know, that's, 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 that's neither here nor there because in order to make a point, you've got to d demonstrate the point. Words do not convey the image that those pictures oh, are throwing. Oh, Jesse, give it up. Oh, bless you. Give it up. Yeah. Give it up. Stay. What's it? it was the music of the 80s, and it's going to be the movies of the 90s, and I'm so damn mad that I'm I was not, born I have not against the music. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next. All right. Before we go to the next break, let me show you the original music video from 1958 and see if you can identify who the singer was, and then the devil's music and how it makes it. Never right, somehow it seems. Right Poor Jiggle, oh, and Jiggle, and somehow they know they can't forget the Boulevard of This is the Pierre Cardin Designer Alarm Clock Telephone, 
and the Craftmatic Adjustable Bed Company wants to send it to you absolutely free. You don't have to buy anything from Craftmatic. Just preview Craftmatic beds and check our price before you buy. Then, even if you don't buy your adjustable bed from Craftmatic, we'll send you this Pierre Cardin Designer Alarm Clock Telephone free. When you get your free phone, call all your friends and tell them the great news. That Craftmatic 2 adjustable beds cost less than many quality flat beds. You have to see Craftmatic beds to believe how affordable they really are. So before you buy any bed, even a sale price flat bed, call toll free and get this free Craftmatic bed color catalog. And this free coupon for your free Pierre Cardin Alarm Clock Telephone. Thanks for my free Pierre Cardin Telephone, Craftmatic. Call to get your free catalog. And alarm clock telephone coupon by mail right away. Call 1-800-247-7111. That's 1-800-247-7111. Toll free. Call 1-800-247-7111. America's greatest job opportunity, experiencing adventure. The professional truck driving industry is hiring qualified drivers now. Call National Tractor Trailer School and turn your life around before it's too late. Hi, friends. February is the month for sweethearts. We want to allow in a game. This is in Red Creek. Morton Downey, check out this earring. Yes! 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 Yeah. We got Stuart with us, all right? Let me, inter let me introduce Stuart Goldman, all right? Stuart, you're a former member of the Kingston Tree, all right? Yes. Now, my producers say, as a former rocker, those of us who have been around yeah. a few years know the Kingston Trio wasn't a rock group. It was a folk group, all right? You later did some rock stuff. Yeah. But uh, now you're a music critic. What do you think about rock music, heavy metal, uh, uh, an outfit like the Cycle Sluts from Hell. If if I if I if I might in <laughs> she spoke French. Well, <laughs> little promo, little little promotion there for the Monsters, which is seen on seen on another show, station, right? If, if I if I might in, in, inject a note of, of intelligence into this into this conversation so far, everybody's been missing the most obvious thing about this. This has nothing to do with music. N none of the, all this has to do with is a style show. There's really nothing interesting about about this. I mean, basically for me, if I look at these people, if I look at the if I look at these people, I mean, I'm the weirdest looking guy in the audience here. So are you? These people look normal. Uh, and, and, and all I'm saying is that, that really, you know, by this point, it's like if you've seen that, been around enough years like you have, this is boring. It's not really very See, interesting. I don't think it's boring. Why? Well, I mean, it's just... I love seen, individuality. You, Lawrence Welk at night, what's boring? No, 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 no. But I mean, if you've seen enough guys like you with, with a headband, and, and you've seen a million guys you with want? tattoos, we'll and you've seen some, a bunch of white girls, 
It's like after a while, it's just not that interesting. I haven't heard Why you guys you play. Get your board, yeah, what are you doing here? They, they paid my way. Go away. That makes sense. I mean, wh wh you know what? What is unique about what you're doing? What's what's so special? What's so here. special? This, this show, if you've been following it so far, is on groupies. All right. Now, what are you saying about what we're dressed Talking like? Talking about for? sex, drugs, rock and roll. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. Haven't we and heard it all before? Question, but when, when you were with the Kingston Trio, I, I, first of all, I guys, wasn't with the Kingston Trio. You weren't I was, with I was with John Stewart, who was a, a member of the Kingston Trio. So you're with a group, a yeah. follow group, yeah. all right? Yeah. yeah. John Stewart. Yeah. You were with John Stewart. Yeah, I was with Doug Kershaw, John Stewart. Okay. Who they call themselves? I used to have big hair like these guys. But did you ever get involved in drugs? Yes, I did. Uh, did you ever get involved in sex? Yes, I did. Did you like rock and roll? Yes, I did, and Thank I still do. Thank you for do. coming here. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, he said it all. He said it all. Normal. Elvis Presley was looked upon as a weirdo because of the DA, yeah, that's what I because mean. of the tight bands. I mean, they're making, whether it's a GQ fashion statement or not, they're making a statement. No, what, what the I, hell difference does what, it make? What I was do we all have to talk like William F. Buckley no, to be no, understood? No, 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 no. All I meant was is that uh, I'm not, I'm, not, I, you know, as a, as a former, I'm an ex-rock critic. They immediately want to make guys like me or him into Tipper Gore. Okay, that's not true. I like this stuff. I just haven't heard any music yet. I haven't really seen anything. Played Ace so just a few minutes. We didn't lay this rap on no, you. No, no, no. You laid it on us, man. I laid what on you? This rap, you know, uh, figuring out what kind of people that we are because the way we dress. I'm not judging you. Nor am I. But you just said I was. You said I made you into some kind of a Tipper Gore thing. I didn't do that. Well, uh, this is what was happening before with him. Well, don't compare what was happening before what's happening right now. Okay. Uh, All right, let me go. Let me go to... Uh, from the slike cycle sluts from hell, let me go to Queen Vixen here. Queen. <laughs> Queen. <laughs> let me tell you something, guys. If Morticia looked like that, you'd all be in the coffin with her. <laughs> yeah. Queenie. Queenie, does your music, does your music have a message? Is there something you're trying to say in your music? Yeah, I think so. I think that one of the reasons that we started this band was because um, it was so difficult to do, to get involved in rock and roll being female. We just weren't, we, we were just weren't taken seriously. And this, our message, is that you don't have to you don't have to get on your knees to hang around rock and roll you can do it yourself you don't have to be a group the word cycle but you got the word but you're, that's a hypocritical statement your name is cycle it's sluts. not a hypocritical sluts statement the word that you're using hey i didn't pay these guys you know i mean you you you've got a, you've got yeah. a name in there cycle sluts from hell and you're telling yourself you don't have to get on your knees I mean, that's no, the other other group called the Beatles. You mean they were have found behind that's your refrigerator fun. all the time? That's not <laughs> that was, one has got to do with sexual innuendo. Those are one dozen. One has got to do with it's sexual innuendo. No, no, innuendo. one does. A slut is not ne necessarily a sexual innuendo. It's just a oh. pig. Well, <laughs> so um, you cycle pigs. No, the name originated because we were cycle sluts. We slutted bike rides. That was it. You got a bike? Uh, let me ask you something. Let me cut I, noticed the, just I, noticed, I noticed a tattoo on your arm. Yeah. Let me go to you feel as a Jesse, woman? Do you feel as a Jesse, woman? let me go to a guy uh, go ahead, go ahead. who hasn't had a chance to I'll talk here. Okay. Let me ask you, Stu, can you yes, compare sir. Bob Dylan and John Bon Jovi or John Lennon and Motley Crue? I mean, where do you think music's gone? You can't compare those two, I don't think. No, there's no, there's no comparison except that Bob Dylan's over the hill, Bon Jovi's boring. Uh, who was the other one? John Lennon. Motley Crue and John Lennon. Uh, John Lennon's dead, and uh, Motley Crue's Doesn't just another John dime a dozen genius. Band. His music still lives with us. Why is he a genius? Why is he a genius? What genius? Why is he a genius? How did he change your life? I didn't say you have to change my life to be a genius. Why is he a genius? Musical genius, a Why writer, an incredible musician. You've never realized that. Where have you been for the last 30 years? I don't think he was a genius. Joey, Joey, along with everything else, you're a producer now. What makes a good song, Wait, a good record? Is Ace. And is it, huh? This is Ace. I'm sorry, Ace. I, me I, meant, uh, I meant Joey. I meant Joey back here. I'm sorry. Joey, what makes a record a good record? What the hell really is it? I mean, is it only sex, drugs, rock and roll, or is there something else that goes into it? Well, let's, let's <laughs> get right up to the microphone, yeah, come man. Over here, man. I'll come up here. Well, it's you know it's um it's what you're tr really trying to get across. You know how what you're really trying to get across. It's like you try and get across. It's like uh, it's emotion. It's raw energy. It's raw emotion. It's uh whatever you know. Maybe you're dissatisfied with something. Maybe it's uh 
various... Let them talk, huh? Let them talk. You know, it, it, it really, uh, what makes a good record is uh, honesty and sincerity. Are and you honest? Yeah, yeah. Are you sincere? Yeah. Yes, well, yes, I think... You I think sure I th that all the records that you produce are honest and sincere? Yeah, we do. Even if they don't sell? That's why they don't sell. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going to come back with the audience, find out what their taste in music is, because they're better than any music critic. Thursday night at 8 on TV 68. The road kills continue in the orange visit Beantown to meet Boston College. The Eagles sit firmly in the Big East cellar, but would love to pull the upset. Syracuse is looking to build momentum going into the Big East and NCAA tournaments. Another road victory would sure help. It's the last time Sherman Douglas and Dana Barrows will face each other during a regular season contest. So the two will surely go all out. That's Syracuse and Boston College, Thursday at 8 on the home of Orange Bit Basketball. TV 68, WSYT. All right. Bingo, baby, you're up to bat. Go ahead. More, more, I just want to say, everyone's talking about protecting the kids, protecting the young female groupies, protecting us from hearing about drugs and devil music. I want to make my own choice. I am a kid. I'm, I just turned hey, 18 uh, recently. I want to make my own choice about what I want to listen to. I don't want my parents. I don't want the government. I don't want Jesse over here telling me what I can listen to. Okay. And you believe, you believe you have enough common sense to make that choice. That's right. I Did you have it at 12? I don't know. 12 is a while ago. So you're getting into a different age group there, I'd right? Say, I'd say once, once, it's, once you're old enough, maybe even 16, 17, I think, is old enough, yeah. you make your own choice. You drive I a mean, car, baby, you can at least drive your own conscience. That's huh? right. That's right. Go ahead, man. These people up here, everybody's busting on them because how they look. They look. They can look whatever way they want to look. I love rock and roll. From Springsteen to the Dead Kennedys, I like varied kind of yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. It doesn't matter what these guys look like. It's the music they put out. And Jesse over here, I wish he would get an application to PMRC because Tipper Gore could use them. You know what I don't understand? Yeah. What I don't understand, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think this audience or the critics recognize how pivotal and how important Joey Ramone and his group was to the music Joey that we're Ramone, going right we now. That's something that I think these guys understand is how much influence this guy had on music that you listen to on the radio we right now. Part of it. You asked. You asked John Bon Jovi. And my career ain't over yet. All right, Joey. Good. Go ahead, pal. Mort, this guy here gave us a big speech about uh, how much he was against drugs and everything. The guy in the middle. He gave us a big speech Alex. about he was against Alex. Yeah. About how much he was against drugs. No, I said we have a song in the record that's anti-heroin. You're saying that you don't do drugs. No, I didn't say that at all. You're not watching. I didn't no, say that, that at all. That's the, that's the impression you're trying to pawn. And before no, the show, not. you were saying, who's got reefer, man? Before the show, you were yelling that's into me? the guitar. Me? That is, yeah. You were saying yeah. it right into the guitar. I was here before the show. Then something's heard, wrong with your hearing, because no, I don't talk like that. something's wrong with you. I don't talk like that. You say, who's got reefer? Who's got reefer? Yeah. They're, they're, trying, they're trying to give an image that they're not for drugs, when they do drugs and they advocate him, he was saying it before the show. I was in his chair. I heard it. And then he's trying to give us uh, an anti-drug speech that his songs are against drugs. But the point is, you're an against drugs, drugs anyhow. Speech. And a guy like that isn't going to influence you to take drugs. He's not going to influence me. But look at him. He can influence somebody that's maybe 12 or 13. I'm 21 in college. I'm beyond that point. Oh, because you go to college and you're 21, that makes you... He was saying it before him. Where does it say that hey, there's drugs written on top? Where does it say? Typical short-haired American. That's right. God, punches the clock, 9 to 5. Here's, here's you're short jealous. Hair. I'm in college, you're buddy. What do you $7 an hour? I make $15 oh. an hour. Oh. I'm a local oh. artist. I'm a local artist trying my ass off to be where these guys are today. And I respect hey, what buddy. every kid says Two out words. there. words. Why okay? bother? Why bother? At least I'll give it a you shot. Got, what are you doing? You got one bad habit. Behind breathing. I go to college. Oh, college. Can you write? Good you luck. know Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I'll tell you something, if, if parents had the way, if... Let me hear that. Let me hear this, man. Quiet. i tell you, if most parents were very strict, they would get rid of it. But a guy like Jesse has no right to get rid of music if he doesn't like it. If he doesn't like it, don't let him buy it. Hey, Zippy. Zippy. Look, I'll say, though, you have your opinion for eight hours. Most people like the rock 
season. It's not your business. It really isn't. I love rock and roll. It's not your business. Because if you, it was your business, you would get rid of every single piece of it. It is my business. I'm a writer. I'm supposed to tell you about it. Wait, wait, yeah, if you, you get paid for being here. Yo, today. if you don't write anything. But how much, you're making a bigger name for yourself today than you ever will. I'm not here because of my name. Let me tell you something. of the music, I'm disapproving of the image. Okay. Young kids in America need to have the proper guidance. Hey, I have one thing this to say. Is not oh, guidance. Let, me, let guidance. me tell you something. You pulled out Bon Jovi albums. You pulled out all these rock albums. To show when, that these young when, kids why are did not you pull, why Because, why because you pull no one not this go out. Why did you play heavy metal? Have, because everyone here is Why are you blaming out? heavy metal, yeah, though? But everybody, I'm not saying the music is bad. I'm saying I'm not blaming heavy metal. I'm blaming yeah, well, most parties do it. Young kid, listen, Look, when you're a 16 year old kid and you see an album with blood on someone's chest that's promoting that, when you see a guy dressed like that, where is guidance? There is no guidance. Does he stay or does he go? We're going to be back with the audience in just a minute. We've done enough talking. Let's play some music for you. The Reporters, where Jimmy the Greek broke his long silence since being fired from CBS. I don't know what I said was wrong. Where Carrie Lee reveals new secrets about her troubled life with lover Hugh Hefner. Where a dying ex-Teamster president admitted that the mob controlled the union and threatened his life. They named my two children, my wife, and he said you'd be last. These are the kinds of stories you'll see on The Reporters on TV 68. How do you make a good thing even better? Introducing the Northeast Edition Ford Escort LX. Now the world's best-selling car comes with AM FM stereo cassette and automatic transmission at no extra charge. Now get 4.9 annual percentage rate financing or $500 cash back on this special edition Escort. While other car prices are going up, the 89 Escort is $826 less than a comparably equipped 84 Escort. Your local Ford dealer is out to win you over. Welcome to the grand opening celebration of the newest Colonial Laundromat, now open at 24 East Genesee Street, Baldwinsville. As part of the celebration, but for a limited time only, all top loaders are just 50 cents. Every Colonial Laundromat is clean and modern, with convenient hours and an attendant always on duty. This is no ordinary laundromat, it's a Colonial Laundromat. Now with five convenient locations, come into a Colonial Laundromat location near you today. Today's woman is intelligent. It was the Rockies, about a 45 degree angle, and it didn't feel right. Now I had a lot of choices, so I figured the best thing to do... Romantic. When the sun's just a whisper above the horizon, and you're heading straight for it, that's a beautiful sight. Independent. Nobody's gonna anchor me behind a desk with piles of papers. Not this woman. Tough. Come on, this is the 80s. We've moved out of traditional low-paying jobs, and we've turned into a real workforce. We can do anything we want. Many of today's women are driving trucks for a living. Just call this number. Find out more. The industry wants us. The opportunities now. That's all we ever wanted. Opportunity. We can handle the rest. Today's women are calling National Tractor Trailer School right now. Find out more. Look, there's a lot of there's a lot of road stories that we haven't heard yet. We're gonna do another show and we're gonna hear some of the road stories. You had a question, sir. Yeah. I just wanna say one thing. If I ever came home looking like you, my mother would throw me the hell out of the house. <laughs> and I'd be Second of all, I'd be embarrassed to walk the streets looking like that. But they don't walk the streets. But they don't walk the streets like that. They're noted. They just look at it. Excuse me? Well, look at you! What?
my trash. So do I, so I can look good. So I can look good. I take a shot every day. Every day. You know what? Hey, I'll tell you what. First of all, first of all, I want to thank Linda Dow for all the help she gave us in uh, getting some of the talent in this show, all right? So, uh, and Rocket Management. I want to, I want to jam. Let's have some music, all right? We'll jam off Circus Powers, uh, Circus of Powers' new album, Motor, and we're going to feature Circus of Power and the Cycle Sluts. Go, baby. Do something for me. <laughs> Next on the WSYT Midnight Movie, it's no normal high school. This is a war zone. Stay tuned for Class of 84, right here on your favorite movie station, TV 68 WSYT. TV 68, WSYT, Fox Television in Central New York.